For quite some time, I've been promising you a video on how I make my motovlogs. And so what I'm going to try to do is go A through Z on how my cameras are set up, what gear I use, how I do my audio, and ultimately how do I edit my videos. And so that's what I'm going to do in this series today. Now, if you haven't already done so, I'd appreciate it if you click that little subscribe button down below. Don't forget that notification bell. We're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers this year. Your help is very much appreciated. Now, first, I want to go over what gear I use, how I have it set up on my motorcycle and my helmet. I don't think it really matters what kind of motorcycle you ride. If you're motovlogging and you want to use two or more cameras, you can maybe apply some of these principles and techniques and it should help you. This may end up actually being two videos because I think the information, there's going to be a lot of information. It might be too much for one long video. So I might split this into two, maybe even three videos. So Let's get started. Let's start out talking about what gear I have mounted to my helmet. Now, this is where I mount my GoPro Hero 10 Black, and I'm using this chin mount from Chin Mounts is the name of the company, and I'll put a link in the description of this video if you're interested. They make these for all different um brands of helmets. I happen to be using an HJC modular helmet and it basically uses double-sided tape to stick to the very front and this is where I mount my GoPro. Now you'll notice to the left of that is where I have a bunch of wire and that is the audio cable that's coming from my lavalier microphone which I have mounted on the inside of the chin of this modular helmet. And I'm using a Purple Panda microphone. It's the best one I have found for use with the GoPro. And it's inexpensive. I think they're around $30 or $40. And it's got the cor correct connections and everything. And it just seems to work very well. But it comes in an extremely long cable. And that's why I had to kind of wrap it up. I'm just using an old GoPro mount that I had mounted to the right side of my chin of my helmet. And that's where I've wrapped up and tied up all of that wire. And if you look underneath that chin, you can see that lavalier microphone. I just have it mounted with Velcro, and I'm using one of those little dead cat fuzzy things to cut down on the wind noise. My helmet camera is a GoPro Hero 10 Black. You can see I have it inside of a media mod, and the media mod allows me to connect my lavalier microphone to the GoPro. And by using these little pull-down fingers that come on the new GoPros, I can slip it into this chin mount and then secure it using the standard GoPro uh, threaded, I don't know what they call them, the little screws that hold it in. Now, I use the ones that have an actual Phillips screw head in the end. That way, I can tighten it using a Phillips screwdriver. Before I fully tighten this down, I want to go ahead and put my audio cable into the back of the Hero uh, Media Mod. The, the bottom flap on the back is a door that opens up and gives you access to the audio uh, port on this Media Mod. And you make sure that's plugged in very securely. And then we're ready to tighten down this mount and I flip the camera all the way back as far as it'll go and then I'm ready to use a Phillips screwdriver to tighten it down and I have a pocket knife from Swiss Army Knife and one of the reasons I love this pocket knife is it has a wonderful built-in Phillips screwdriver. I use this thing all the time. I'll also put all of this stuff in the links in the description down below. Now, for me, a typical motor vlog is I've had my coffee for the morning. I'm going to go outside, get on the bike, and I'm going to start motor vlogging. Now, typically, I keep my helmet in the trunk of the bike with the GoPro already mounted. I usually mount it at home before I get on the bike to come to breakfast or coffee or wherever I am. 
but I do not leave my GoPro mounted to the handlebars, my second GoPro. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my helmet out of the bike, set it on the seat. I may go ahead at this point and turn on the GoPro on my helmet just to have it on and ready to go. I may not start recording yet. Just depends. I can. It doesn't matter either way. And I'm going to just set this on the seat. You may also notice on my top shelter I have some notes that I use gaffer tape to tape to my uh, gas cap just in case I need to remind myself what I want to talk about. And then I keep my other GoPro, which is a GoPro Hero 8 Black, in the trunk, and I will put it on the handlebars using this special mounting system. All of these items are in the description of this video. I love this Ulanzi mounting system. I use it for all my cameras, not just my GoPros. And on this mount, I also have a 360 degree rotation. If I need to spin that GoPro around left or right, I can do that. I can adjust it. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on this Hero 8. And I'll go ahead and start recording it because a lot of times I'll record myself walking out to the bike. And then once I get my helmet on, I will start each motor vlog with a hand clap, as you can see here. My hands are clapping. I'm doing that in front of both cameras so I can synchronize the audio with the video on these two cameras. You can see they're synchronized right there both videos line up and we're going to talk about that in the next section. So now I'm ready to begin the editing portion of this tutorial and this is where I'll be editing my moto vlog that we're kind of talking about today. Now I use Final Cut Pro as my editing software. Of course you can edit in any software. I'm on a Macintosh actually a MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Mac. It's irrelevant. You could be editing on anything. Um, this is not a Final Cut Pro tutorial per se. I'm not going to get into the weeds on all the in-depth nomenclature of Final Cut Pro. There are plenty of videos on uh, YouTube that get into much more detail on Final Cut Pro editing techniques. I'm just going to show you how I do what I do and a few of the te techniques that I use and maybe that will help you if you're already familiar with Final Cut Pro or perhaps whatever editing uh, software that you use. It might be a, some assistance or help. Now as you can see on the left hand side uh, I have my uh, I have two libraries open. The one I'm using today is named Cruise Man. And inside that library, I've already created an event. And I've named that event MotoVlog 4-24. That's just the date I'm using. And inside of that event, I've already added some photographs, as you can see on the left-hand side, in kind of the library contents. The main viewer window is where we can actually uh, see, you know, if I select some of these different items, I can actually see them more detail. These are some pictures I'm going to be using in this video, in this moto vlog. I'll be referring to these photos. And I may add some more down the road. But the first thing I'm going to do is, in this video, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import my video files from my two GoPro cameras. As we talked about earlier, I use a GoPro on the handlebars and I have a, actually it's a GoPro Hero 8, and then I have a GoPro Hero 10 on my helmet. And I'm going to bring the video files in from both of those cameras. So I'm going to go up to the import menu right here, this little arrow. And inside this folder on my desktop, I have four files. And you can see two of them are named differently than the other two. And that's because each of my GoPro cameras actually names the files differently. So I'm going to bring all four of these files in. Now the reason there's four files is because the GoPro will stop recording after so many minutes and it will create a second or third file depending on how long you're shooting video. So I have actually two files from this camera and then I have these two files from the other camera and 
the the second file just picks up where the first file left off. It's just that GoPro can only create a file. I think it's up to four gigabytes, maybe. I'm not sure the actual size, but there is a limit as to how large a file it can create. So it it just cre keeps creating these files until you run out of uh, space on your micro SD card. Now I take the micro SD card out of my cameras and I actually copy those over to the desktop of my computer. And then once I've done that, I import them here into Final Cut. So, and as we scrub through these, you can kind of see the video. This is the helmet camera here. And this, of course, is my handlebar camera, which is facing me. So it looks back at me as I'm riding the motorcycle. You're probably familiar with that. Now, we talked earlier about synchronizing these two video files or these two camera angles. And we're going to do that by using what's called a multicam clip. In Final Cut, they refer to it as a multicam clip. And what I'm going to do is I need to name these video files. I need not, not to name the file name, but I need to change the camera name. If you'll notice over on the right hand side of the screen, when I have this file selected, the camera name field is empty. And the GoPro typically will either leave that information empty or sometimes it might come in as untitled. But whatever it is, we cannot leave that empty. If you'll look at this file up here from this camera, you'll see the same thing. So what I need to do is I need to make sure all of the clips from each camera has a unique name by name by naming the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two clips by holding down the shift key. You can see the yellow border. They're both selected and these are both from the handlebar camera. So I'm just going to name this handlebar. I'm going to come over here to the right hand side. And I'm just going to type in the name handlebar. Hope I spelled that right. Yeah. And now if I select the, this clip, you could see it's named handlebar and the other one's named handlebar. They both have the same camera name. Now, if I go down to the other two clips, which are from my helmet camera, and I'm sorry, my hat keeps hitting this microphone. I apologize for that. Might be a little distracting. And I'm going to name these Helmet. You can name these whatever you want. The name is not important. It, d it has no relevance. It's just a way of identifying each of your different cameras. If you had a third camera, say a rear-facing camera mounted to your trunk, uh, you would also give those files a unique name based on that camera. So now this allows Final Cut Pro, when we create this multicam clip, to know which clips came from which camera. After I finished this video and I went back and watched it, I realized I might need to do a little more expl explanation on the naming of these files and why it's important. So just to reiterate, the first two files that come from my GoPro Hero 8, which begin with Cam 1, those are the files that come from the handlebar camera and we have to have a way of telling Final Cut Pro that those clips belong together and the way we do that is by giving them the same camera name since they did come from the same camera those two files will have the same camera name in my example I named those handlebar this tells Final Cut that those two clips belong together in sequence now, Final Cut can identify the sequence of the clips based on the file number or the file name in this case because one of them is 10119 and the next clip is 20119. So Final Cut knows that 10119 comes before 20119. But it has to know that they both go with the same camera. Otherwise, it will get confused when constructing the multicam clip. And the same is true of the other two clips that are on the helmet camera that begin with GX. 
those two clips have to have the same camera name, but it must be different than the camera name of the first two clips, which is pretty obvious. So when your various clips come from a camera, those clips all have to have the same camera name. So now what we need to do is we need to identify or create a way for these clips to be synchronized with each other. Now you'll notice these first two clips. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight both of them. <clears throat> you'll notice they have a similar name, just the file name itself. And one is a the last five digits is 10199. And the next one is 20199. So they are in a sequence of sorts. The same thing is true of the other two clips from the other camera. They're named 10024 and 20024. And Final Cut can recognize which clips and what order they go in once it's creating this multicam clip. But on the very first clip of the handlebar camera, what I need to do is identify a place where these files will be synchronized. Now, we talked about the hand clap, and that's why I use the hand clap. In the old days of movies, or even in the modern movies, they use a clapper board, and that allows them to synchronize audio with video. If you had a separate audio source, let's say you were recording your voice during a motovlog to an audio recorder as opposed to a GoPro camera. I happen to record mine to the helmet camera, the GoPro helmet camera. But you could very easily record your voice to just a digital audio recorder. You would need a way to synchronize that audio with your video from your GoPro. And you can do that through a hand clap. You can do it through any audible spike in the audio source. Maybe you want to honk your horn or whatever. And I'm going to show you how I do that now using my technique, which is just a simple hand clap. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to view these files. Right now I'm viewing them in what's called a film strip mode. And I'm going to come up to this icon and I'm going to, I'm going to view these as a list. So now I'm viewing my files in a list mode. And I'm going to spread this out. I'm going to make this window a little bit wider because I want to be able to see those audio waveforms a little bit better. Now, unfortunately, uh, go, um, I'm sorry, Final Cut does not let me see a bigger view of these audio waveform. But even with what I can see right here, I notice there's a spike right in here, and that's going to be in the general area of where I clapped my hands. So I'm going to set the playhead. That's that, that long vertical red line. That represents the playhead, and that represents the point in that video clip that we're actually seeing in the main view window. So I'm going to click right there to set that playhead point. And if I hit the space bar on my keyboard, it will begin playing from that point forward. And what I want to do is I want to play to the point where I clap my hands, and I'm going to set what's called a marker. I'm going to set a marker right on that hand clap, and I'll show you how that works. So now I hit play. Okay, I stopped the video right there. This is where my hands came together. I, I stopped the video playing back by hitting the space bar again. On the Macintosh Final Cut Pro, the space bar will start and stop playback of a video clip. So I stopped the video right there. Now I'm going to back up a frame or two. I want to make sure I set my marker exactly where my hands come together. Let me go back. See, they're already together, back, right there. Hands are apart. I'm going to go one more frame, and that's where they come together. And this is where I'm going to set my marker. And I set the marker by pressing the M key on the keyboard. Now, when I press that M key, you'll notice a little blue box appears right above that playhead line on that video clip. That's my marker.
Okay, now I have the marker set for that camera angle. And in Final Cut Pro, and kind of in videography in general, we refer to this as an angle. This is the view from that camera. So let's go to our next camera angle, which is the helmet camera. And that's the, the first clip from that camera is this one right here. So this is where I should be getting my hand clap on that camera. And I'm going to just move forward a little bit. Now, I started the camera recording on the handlebar earlier than I did the one on the helmet. So there will be a little more video before the hand clap on the handlebar cam than there is on the helmet cam, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter really when you do this hand clap. You could do it halfway through the video. It's just being used as a point of reference for Final Cut to know how to synchronize these two clips. Or in this case, it's actually four clips, but these two different camera angles. So let's go ahead and start playback. You see my playhead is right here. And I'm going to hit the play on the keyboard. And I will press the play uh, space bar when I see the hands come together. Okay, so there is the hand clap. I'm going to back up a couple of frames. Keep going back till the hands are apart. And there the hands are apart. And if I go forward one frame, and I'm using, in my case, I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard to go backward and forward. You can also use other keys. There are other keyboard shortcuts in Final Cut. I just am used to using the arrow keys. So I'm going to go forward one frame. And there the hands are together, and I'm going to press the M key. Now, if you're using a separate audio recorder, you wouldn't base it, obviously, on the visual of the hands coming together. You'd be base basing it on the audio sound of those hands clapping. You could listen for that clap, and that's where you would set your marker on your audio file. So let's go ahead and set the marker. And now you see that little blue marker appears at the top of that camera angle. And that's pretty much all we have to do to tell Final Cut how to synchronize these clips. I'm going to go back to the film strip view. And I'm going to make my window a little bit more narrow. We only need to see one vertical row of these. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all four of these video clips and you can see the markers on the two that are the first clips in the sequence on each camera. So um, 10199 and 10024 both have those markers. And now I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to choose from this little pop-up menu new multicam clip. And this brings up this dialog. And in this dialog, I'm going to give it a name. And I'm just going to call it MC01. I just use that because it's Multicam 01. And you'll notice some different options here. I don't touch anything except I want to make sure under Angle Synchronization, I select First Marker on the Angle. This tells Final Cut that I'm using those markers as my point of reference for it to create this multicam clip. I could, without those markers and without that hand clap, I could do automatic. Automatic would work if I had good audio on both cameras. Uh, Final Cut could go through and basically compare the audio waveforms of both of those cameras and on its own it could synchronize. But when I'm going down the road, my handlebar camera is really just picking up road noise. It's not picking up my voice. So it would be very difficult for Final Cut to try to sync up those audio files because my helmet camera is picking up my voice while the uh, handlebar camera is simply picking up road noise, traffic, things like that. So automatic doesn't really work well in a case like this. And that's why I'm choosing first marker on angle. I even use this technique when I'm doing studio multi-camera shots. But let's go ahead and select that. Now I am going to have my multi-cam clip created in 4K. You can see that I can choose 
a lot of different options here. I do shoot 4K video from my GoPros now. I used to shoot 1080p, but now I found that if I shoot my video in 4K, I get better quality even when I render out a 1080p uh, video. So plus it gives me the ability when it's shot in 4K, if I need to do any cropping, I can go down as much as 50% and I don't lose any resolution uh, by shooting in 4K and then doing my final edit and rendering in 1080p. So let's go ahead and select 4K, and I am doing 29.97 frames per second, and uh, that's it. I'm going to select OK, and Final Cut's going to go out and create this multicam clip. And as you can see, it's very fast. And it has created, using those four files that I had selected, everything's lined up perfectly. We'll go in and look at this clip in just a second to get more detail. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a project. And a project is where we're actually going to take this file and going to start doing our editing. So I'm going to select my Motovlog 424 event, and I'm going to choose New Project. And when that comes up, I'm going to have to give my project a name, and I'm just going to call it Motovlog 424. You can name it whatever you want. It's irrelevant. The only difference is I'm only going to have a 1080p project. I don't need the project to be in 4K because I'm ultimately going to render this out and save it in 1080p to upload to YouTube. So let's click OK. And now it has created an empty project for us. What I like to do is I have certain elements that I use in all of my motive logs. And what I've done is I've created a template project and I've stored all of those elements. Some of them are text. Some of them are what we call plugins. Some of them are audio files, music. And I'm going to go up to this B-roll event. And you'll see I have one called MV template. That's a project. It's simply a template project. And it's where if I double click on it, this is where I've stored all of those elements that I use. Let me shrink it down a little. And if I use Command minus sign, it will make this timeline smaller. I'll hit it again. See how it makes everything smaller? I can also zoom in by hitting Command plus sign. Okay, so I have all these different items here that I'm going to select. And some of these are stacked on top of each other. So don't, don't let this confuse you right now. And I'm basically going to copy these. And I'm going to go back to my other time, my empty timeline, and I'm simply going to paste these in. So now I have all of my kind of, you might say, my template elements that I use in every motive log so they don't have to go out and recreate these for every time I do a motive log. And I think as I go through this, it will make more sense to you. So let's go back to our Motive Log 424 event, and we have our multicam clip here. Let's double click and go look inside the multicam clip because we can basically drill down. You notice when I drag through this, all I'm seeing is the handlebar camera, and that's because the handlebar camera right now is defined by default as what they call the monitoring angle. So let's double click this and we'll see how this is all set up. Now this is inside of a multicam clip. You can see I have my two different camera angles. I have the handlebar camera and I'm just holding the mouse over. You can see my playhead. And then I have the helmet camera down here. Turn my volume down a little bit so it doesn't get too distracting. And if we look over on the far left side of these clips, you'll see the names that we gave those names, handlebar, and then down below is helmet. That's the name of our two different angles. Now, you'll notice this icon here is blue, while this one down here is grayed out. And that's telling us that right now, 
the handlebar camera is our monitoring angle. It is the one that if we were to play through this, then, and I'll hit the play button, in the main viewer, we're going to be seeing the monitoring angle. If we want to see the helmet camera, we can come down here and click on that little icon. It now turns blue. This one turns gray. But now this is our monitoring angle. And if we begin playing through this multicam clip, we're now seeing video from the helmet camera. Okay. Maybe that makes sense, but the same thing is true of audio. Right now, we're only getting the audio from the handlebar camera and not the helmet camera, but we're getting the video from the helmet camera. If I want to monitor the audio from the helmet camera, simply click on that icon, and now as we play, you can see we're getting audio. Here we go. So now we're getting audio and video from the helmet camera in our main viewer. And the only reason that's important, it does not affect our editing back in our other timeline, which you'll see in a minute. It's just allowing us to work with these files here that are in our multicam clip. Now, the only thing I'm going to do in this at the end of this video, I want to end with one thing, is I'm going to show you how I use some techniques inside the multicam clip uh, to make some edits that will appear in our final video. Normally, I don't do much inside the multicam clip. One thing I will do if I move this playhead over, and I'm going to scroll over a little bit so you can see better. You can see here, this is the first clip from our handlebar camera. This was the second clip, and you can see that Final Cut Pro put these together one after the other. Let me zoom in a little bit closer so you can see. Now down below are the two clips. This is from the helmet camera and there's our second clip. In other words, we ran out of time. It, the, the file size got too large. GoPro ended that clip, created a whole new clip. But you may notice a little gray area. I'm going to zoom in a lot more here so you can get very close in. And if you'll you notice this little gray area here, I'm not sure exactly why Final Cut does this. It's like there's a little bit of space before it creates that second clip. And if I was in editing and I'm using that clip, it would give me a little black space. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I move my playhead just before that and hit play, see that little black blip? Well, I can get rid of that now by just clicking and dragging this over to snap it to that previous clip. And I'm not sure why Final Cut does that, but so I like to go through my multicam clip and make sure all of these clips are right next to each other. There's none of that gray space. Let's play it again and you'll see we won't get that little flashing black box. See, it's totally smooth. Okay, so that I've done. The other thing I like to do inside the multicam clip is I've noticed on my helmet camera, a lot of times as I'm going down the road, my view appears angled. It's I don't know if I got the camera mounted crooked or if maybe I hold my head crooked when I'm going down the road. I'm not sure what it is, but you can see the horizon on the video is at a slight angle. And I've noticed this in a lot of my videos and that can be corrected and I'm going to correct it now and I'm going to show you how I do it. So that way if you have any video where your horizon is not perfectly level, you can make some adjustments to that and I like to do it inside the multicam clip. I could do it in our editing clip, but to me it's easier to do it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to my film strip editor. And this is the on the inspector. And you'll notice there is a rotation adjustment. I can rotate this clip. Now, I can sit here and rotate this clip as much as I want. I can go in either direction. You can see when I rotate the clip. But you'll also notice when I rotate the clip, I end up with black bars on the different edges or corners. And that's because I'm rotating the clip inside of a specified 
uh, area on the video. And we don't want those black bars to show up. Now, it turns out I only need to maybe move this three degrees to get it to level. Maybe not even that. Let's see. I think uh, about... Let's go to let's go three degrees. I can actually type in the number three here, and that looks a little more level to me than what it does, um, you know, coming out of a camera. Now you'll also notice, but we have these black bands around the edges. How do we get rid of that? What do we do about that? Well, the easiest and quickest way to do that is by zooming in, and I'm just going to scale this video up and push in on that up to about in this case it looks like about a hundred and twelve percent maybe let me go to 112 let me go down to 111 I just play with these numbers I don't see any black bands there so I think a hundred let me try 110 110 percent looks good um, Let's try 109. I think even 109 works. Let's try 107. Oh, I hit 7 instead of 107. Let's just... And 107, I'm still seeing a little bit of black on the upper left and lower right. So I think 109 is the magic number. And that zo it's zooming in. You're getting a little bit zoomed in image but it's getting rid of those black bands on the corners now remember I've only modified this this first clip on that angle this one has not been modified yet so I will come over here and I'll type in three degrees and 109 and now it also has been adjusted so we've adjusted both cl clips to our new angle. Okay, that's all I do. Now, if I were going to do color correction, this is where I would do it. I would do it inside of the multicam clip. Uh, I don't do color correction generally as a general rule of thumb on a moto vlog because it's just, to me, it's not worth it. Uh, usually, I don't want to spend the time, and the colors that come out of the GoPro are good for a moto vlog. So this is the pretty much the extent of what I do inside of the um, multicam clip itself. Now, to go back to our moto vlog editing timeline, I'm simply going to click this left arrow, and now we're back here, and all I have to do is to drag my MC01, which is my multicam clip, down onto this timeline, and I'm going to put it in between these two audio files. Sometimes I put a little music at the front, sometimes I put some at the end. And if we, um, let me zoom out so you can see, this is the entire timeline just zoomed out. So you can see at the very end, I've got my music and my end clip. At the very beginning, I've got all my other little standard tools that I use throughout the video. And then I'm going to zoom in again so I can get in a little bit tighter. Okay, so this is uh, creating the multicam clip, doing a little editing on the multicam clip. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we then begin editing this multicam clip in Final Cut Pro to edit together our moto vlog. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and uh, don't forget to subscribe and click that little notification bell. Much appreciated. I'll see you in the next video.